morning, everyone. Welcome to Get Your Paint On here this Thursday, October 3rd, not 2nd, 3rd. Uh, a couple of things to go into before we start off on stream today. Uh, first off, uh, I'm going to remember this time to do this first. We have Tony Konacek with me today. Hey, good morning. And Oz Schoonover. Hello. I think that's right. No, it's Schoonover with a K <laughs> sound. Like, like the word school. I knew I was going to get it wrong. Everyone does. Yeah, I know. Uh, anyways, a couple things. We've got uh, subscriptions. So let's talk a little bit about this. We're getting pretty close to being able to unlock a new emote. Yeah, we get to, uh, if we get 65 We get 65. So we're getting pretty close. Uh, we have a list of new emotes that we're looking at doing. Uh, it is the Chibi Ashland, Chibi Eris, Master's Logo, Steamroller Logo, Riot Quest Loot Coin, Riot Quest Death Trap and Monster Apocalypse Donut Factory. Yeah, so if you, uh, Oz is going to post a, uh, a link into the, the chats um, for a poll, which, I just you can, did. which you can go vote for which one you want to appear next. But we cannot do it until we have 65 subscriptions, and we are very close. We're getting pretty close. Super so close. Subscribe, let you know when we're going up, when, when we're live, etc., and you know, helps us keep this thing going. Uh, stream schedule, hobby and terrain. Whoa, that's not where that goes. Uh, okay, Wednesdays, Dev Hangout, 10 a.m. Uh, a lot of you guys probably saw that yesterday. Uh, mm -hmm. It's going to happen pretty regularly now that we're most of the way through this move. Although, bear in mind... We, we, we are not done with construction, but we have moved everything. Yeah, you yes. can, if you listen everything closely, you can, you can hear some saws and hammers and, yes. uh, and, and beeping of moving equipment in the background. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Thursdays, which you guys obviously know about, get your paint on. Uh, we have Staff Showdown October 14th. That is, I believe, Wednesday. It's like a, is that a Tuesday? They're, they're on Tuesdays now, typically. Tuesdays, yeah, yeah, and the so next, next game is a Game of War Machine. Ooh, excellent. Mm -hmm. Do we know who's going to be on it yet? I believe it's going to be Faye and Lauren. Excellent. Uh, and then October 11th, we got Hobby Hangout with either Brian or Danny. Should be know? Brian. Should be Brian? Yeah. Okay. Uh, excellent. Uh, let's move on to... Mini crate. Uh, so basically, everything's the same. We got Lil Fenris, October 19th, Transfer Dancers VIP subscription model. Uh, Sawa Tadaka is available through October 5th. That will be the last day that you can subscribe and get him. Uh, Shosuro Sadako is the VIP subscription model currently. Mm -hmm. And then our Savage Mini Crate, uh, we got Belit and King Conan, which is the VIP subscription model. You get that by October 12th. Uh, and last thing is going to be the Hobby and Terrain Instagram. This is where you can keep updated with all the hobby and terrain stuff that happens here at Privateer Press. Uh, Danny updates this pretty frequently with projects that he's working on, like this uh, kind of in progress being built Warjack mm -hmm. uh, that he started well, last, last Hobby Hangout. Yeah, this, this, is, this is last week's Hobby Hangout project. So if you want to see how Danny built that up, go check it out. Cool. And then uh, because we had some technical difficulties last week, mm -hmm. we are going to continue on with Nova. So we're going to continue working on this. Uh, Tony is joining me on stream, if you guys didn't get a chance to check that out last week. Uh, we are doing a dual paint stream now, uh, something we're trying out just to kind of see how people like it. Um, but we started a little bit of this last mm -hmm. week. Tony, uh, because we started doing this, I recommended that Tony kind of come up with an idea of what he wanted to do uh, paint-wise for the model. So he's got some ideas. Do you want to yeah, so re we, reiterate what you were talking about? If you were here last week, we, we kind of covered it a little bit, but I'll, I'll go over it again. Um, so one of the things is like I, I kind of wanted my, my Nova and my guard to look a little more militarized. Uh, I always liked the, the buff dust color, yellow color of military vehicles. Um, but I didn't think, so these references were, were pretty good, but I just didn't think they had enough pop um, for a model like this for, for Monster Apocalypse. So when I came across this image of this jet, um, that like I just love how the black contrast came out against the, the lighter yellow. These red accents in here were really... Um, looking cool, and so I think that is the color scheme on that lower jet that I want to go with, but I would like to keep kind of more of the sand dust color yellow rather than the bright yellow on the, the bottom jet there. Excellent. All righty. And Oz was not here with us last I time. was not. So. Um, Hungerford was. I, I had taken the day off for things, and Hungerford was here, but 
Hungerford's now taking a day off for things, and I'm here, so we just swapped. Awesome. So uh, last week, kind of what we went through is we talked a little bit about using um, thin down paints over a Zenithal base coat mm -hmm. to get really quick and easy base coats uh, of paint on your model. You can kind of see that here, where I've just gone over it with the very thin layer of, uh, I think it was moldy ochre. Might have been sulfuric yellow. We'll have to figure that out here in a minute, because neither of us remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you can see a little bit back here as well. Um, so for this, you just want to have really thin down paint. Tony was trying it a little I, bit himself. You know, I was... <clears throat> I was thinning my paint, and I, I wasn't even thinning it enough. Yeah. Like, once, once we kind of compared notes a little bit, I was struggling because I was like, you know, I was getting my base coat on there. It was getting nice coverage, and then I started adding that, um, that darker thornwood green, and it just wasn't, wasn't going on the way, uh, the way yours was. And then when we compared our paints, I was just not even half as thin as you, thinking I was thinning way down. So, so if you're trying this technique at home, thin down those paints a lot. Um, so now I got to figure out where I'm going to pick up here. I'm going to go back to that thornwood green, and I'm going to do I'm going to do moldy ochre. It is moldy ochre. It is moldy ochre. Yep. We're also going to talk a little bit about Nova spoilers. We as are going to do some Nova spoilers. But next week's hobby, I mean next week's dev hangout is Monster Apocalypse, and we'll be talking about Nova and Zaxor and the models in their unit blisters that are coming out that same month, and we might have their cards. I'm getting really close to having their cards to design. So depending on how quick that happens, we might have images of their full cards to spoil next week. Next week? Because they are November releases. So Nova's coming out in November along with the um, exosuits and the MR tank, the Mr. Tank. It's the monster response tank. But, tank, but, but we already tank. have it established that G-Tank is the normal tanks, so MR-Tank is the super special tank, and it's the Mr. Tank. So yeah, that's the guard side of that release. And then Zaxor with Scorchers and an Exterminatrix, a weird Destructomite kind of looking worm thing, is what is coming out for Planet Eaters in November. Right on. So I'm just kind of <clears throat> going over some of these areas that I went over last week, um, just to reinforce and you know saturate this yellow color a little bit more with some extra base coats. But I'm leaving the areas that are um, supposed to be in a little bit of shadow, and I'm not going to worry too much about uh, fully coat like doing a full base coat with this yellow because a lot of the highlights and the um, shades that we're gonna put in here are going to add a lot more of the opacity that we're gonna be looking for in a full base coat uh, after the fact. So yeah, I'm just going over all my shadows right now because they were pretty, pretty uneven. I did not get a good coat on them last time. And uh, I believe we mixed in Thornwood Green for our, uh, yes. our shade. That is correct. So this is, yeah, I'm just going around trying to figure out where all the shadow's going to go, keep everything even. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to have to go back at some point and just kind of recapture some of that original moldy, moldy ochre base coat. I just got two, mm -hmm. two turned around when we were starting. But the good news with painting is that you can just fix it by painting over it. As long as you didn't use too thick a paints the first time. That's why you water it down a bunch. Yeah. Even then, I th you know, I feel that you can still you can still recover a lot of things. Although if you're doing with the uh, the zenithal highlight, you will you will lose that as your guide. So that is one thing to be conscious of. So um, Anthony Baxter in the Twitch chat is asking how to get the little piggy emotes, and those are subscriber yeah. emotes. Yeah, so the, the way you get the emotes is by subscribing to the channel. So you, when you subscribe, I think you get all the emotes, right? You, you get yeah, all you get the six. tiers. You get all of them, and right now we have six. If, mm -hmm. uh, if you subscribe, you're going to add to our subscriber base. If we can get to 65 subscribers, and we are in the high 50s right now, yeah. if we can get to 65 we will uh, release a new emote. 
Um, and uh, Dork Jedi must have missed our comments earlier about construction going on because th the comment was that our marks are very sensitive and they're picking up our keyboards. But no one has been typing since this show started. That is pallet jacks and stuff moving things around and there's a beeping sound you guys might be hearing. But yeah, any of that clackety clackety sound is things happening in the warehouse as they're putting shelves back up and moving big, big solid things around. Well, it sounds like we might be getting just a little bit of uh, electrical noise feedback in one of the mics just ever so slightly. Yeah. I blame Tony. It's all, it, I mean, it's always my fault, right? That's... <laughs> But and I don't, I don't blame uh, that is literally my responsibility to take care of. And there's some conspiracy theories that the beeps are secret spoiler Morse code. <laughs> but that, the, the only beep I hear right now is really consistent. It's true. So it's not very good Morse code if it's Morse code. It's just repeating the same letter over and over Well, again. no, you, you're going to have to take those beeps and, and uh, run them through software that changes frequency because within the solid oh. beep are fluctuations oh. that then reveal. It's like the movie Contact. There's layers the upon yeah. layers and it's, it's all is, 3D. Yeah, this is where you get to say enhance. Enhance. Magnify. So we might all right. Looking at the camera very much. I don't know if my head's getting. So we are getting some luxurious hair, yeah. some bangs every once in a while <laughs> in that every camera. Once in a while. Yeah. Uh, really I'm, stay I'm looking pretty good over here to move on to the next stage. Okay. Right. Well, How yeah. are you looking over there, Tony? Uh, you know, I'm getting there. I can. Uh, while you're explaining the next one, I'll just get. Okay. I'll just get a little more caught up. Uh, so I think a good place to go is to base coat some of this these black areas. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna take some Thamar black. <clears throat> or actually, you know what? I'm going to take some coal black. And then I'm going to shade down with Thamar black afterwards. Coal black, shading with Thamar black? Yeah. I'm going to have to abandon these backpacks. And I didn't even get to her helmet. So Jordan's a way faster painter than I am. I do this a lot more than you do. That was also true. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to keep this on camera. I'm not used to the, the positioning as much as I usually am. Yeah, we're, we're still kind of experimenting with setups in here also. We've got a lot more room, which is why some of you might be hearing echoes and stuff off, the, off some of these microphones, because the room tripled in size, basically, from other studio. Yeah. So this... Even more so for the Get Your Paint On. Yeah, so. this, this setup wasn't nearly possible in the old one, because we were in a pretty small office for Get Your Paint On. Well, we were actually, I was, we were in three different places. Yeah. We had the main studio, we had the Get Your Paint On studio, and then we actually had um, my office, and now all of those are combined mm -hmm. into one room, which is fantastic. And, and there's still extra space in this room. And there's still a little extra space, rooms. yeah. So yeah. We got the rec room over there in the corner. Uh -huh. Yeah, we got the green screen wall, we got the other wall, the brown screen wall. <laughs> Purple screen. Brown, well, I don't yeah, know. yeah, this is nice. I don't know what that color behind Jordan technically was is. A, it was a good pick, Tony. Yeah. I think so, too. I yeah. made this decision and convinced you to not go with the lighter one. <laughs> I like how it turned out. Yeah, we could, almost, we could almost fake that you and Jordan are in two different locations because the wall behind Tony is white and the it's, wall behind uh, Jordan is not. I'm planning to paint that one the same as yeah. that one. Yeah. All right. So where are we, where are we doing this, these right. black? So I'm starting down here at the these kind of like uh, under kneecap things. Okay. <laughs> now, have you already <laughs> darkened your coal black, or are you doing straight coal this black? Is a straight coal black. Okay, then I will save that one for later. Those are maneuvering thrusters. Oh, I'm like falling behind here. Yeah, under the kneecaps. Tony's just like rushing over there to. To catch up. Well, yeah, and normally you get to go, you, you go at your own pace, but now I'm like, oh, geez. But you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. If I get behind, I get behind. I also don't know what Jeff Hanley's doing in there, but he gifted some people some su subscriptions. That's cool. Ooh. So now, five people got subscriptions dang. gifted by Jeff. I don't know. I don't know if that, I don't know what his plan is for that. I don't know if he's just trying to. Stack things a bit so we can get that emote faster. Hey, whatever works. Yeah. We'll get that emote out there. That sounds um, like somebody wants a new emote. So one, of the, one question I had, Jordan, is yeah. I was kind of messy on my painting. So like yep. right in here, you know, I like 
overpainted onto the parts that I'm yep. going to do dark. And now this is very thin paint, so I'm concerned mm -hmm. that that paint is going to show through just the thin paint, right paint just it. right over it. Yeah, so it, part of it is that you're painting with a darker color, mm -hmm. and you're going to highlight over this anyways okay. with a different color. Okay. So it's going to end up covering it up in the long run. Uh, like this area right here on mine, if you can see, Tony, you can't really see it very yeah. well, but this was covered up by paint on mine. Okay. And like here, I'll do the uh, these thrusters at the top that are like covered in a lot of yellow. I'll just cover them. Also, if you haven't looked at that poll yet, there um, are emotes that basically pay homage to all of our games, but only one of them is a Monster Apocalypse emote, so that's the one that has to win. Yeah. Uh, I really, Everyone wants a donut factory. Donut. I want the Death Trap, actually. Sure. I want Death Paint Trap Splat emote. Open for. You want that's well, that's not one of the options. Paint Splat's on not one, one of the options. options. It should be one of the options. I was not involved in this decision making. Neither was I. Tony just likes me and gave me a... Give me a Monster Apocalypse emote. Are we going all the way up onto the legs too, Jordan? Uh, yeah, I'll probably paint the, the legs on this okay. as well. It, se it seems like a natural yeah. place to go. So this kind of does the, the benefit of dark lining everything and also... Um, base coating other parts of the model as well. well. And I like, you know, as we've discussed coal black before, I like that it's not, we don't have a straight black here, right? It's got that little green cast to it, so it makes it much more interesting to look at. And yeah, this like teal green color um, is, a, is a really good complement to the, the moldy ochre. Um, especially once we darken it up and it's not so green, um, it'll look a lot better. So I've given no thought to where any of the other red accents should be. So I'm going to be kind of yeah, trying to pay think, attention a little bit. Yeah, here I would to say think about go. that while you're you're going through all the areas and base coding, and you'll come up with some game plans as to where you want to put the red stripes. Uh, we might. What I might recommend that we do is just freehand some red stripes. Oh, just put little designs in yeah, there. It might be a good thing to kind of practice. Now I kind of wish I had done some some research on some cool design work to, to put on there. Just make it yeah, up. It is just to make it up as we go. Yeah. I'm a big fan of, uh, of reference. If I, uh, if I try to do it off the cuff, sometimes it turns out all right, but I usually wish that I had known ahead of time what I was going to do so that I could <clears throat> do it a little better and cleaner. All right, so I'm taking some Thamar black, and I'm going to mix it into this coal black. So we can do a little bit more darker base coats. This I won't thin down quite as much. Um, if you want to pull over to the palette cam, and kind of see what I'm doing over here. So this right here is about the consistency on the wet palette of that black coal black mix. It's like so. It's still pretty thick. Is, but it's watery enough that it spreads really nicely. Right. <clears throat> Let me go back here. I'm just going to hit the undersides of this. Like that. So if anybody's joining us late and they um, are curious about that poll, it's a Steamroller logo or a Masters logo. So some just... Pretty tr traditional logos for War Machine. Chibi Arish or Chibi Aslan. So you get some, some new Chibi characters. And we have one Chibi. We have Amademos right now as an emote. Yeah, right? he's, if you subscribe now, you yeah. get uh, Amademos. And then the two Monpok um, Chibis are also in there. The Monster Apocalypse Donut Factory is an option. Or the Riot Quest Loot Coin, which I really like because it's a Scully, like our logo, but it's cartoony and, and a coin. Or the Death Trap, which is the, the token art, right? The little bear trap. Yeah, the little art. bear trap token. Yeah, so that's, a little square that's my favorite. bear trap piece of token art.
So I'm just going through here, getting that base coat in there, but also adding a little bit more. Helps cover up some of that darker color. And then for areas like this, I'm just gonna take my brush, get all the black paint off, and I'm gonna feather it in with the damp brush. I'm gonna abandon where I'm at. <laughs> start getting in there. So putting it in the dark areas, the undersides. Yep. And see, I think Tony might have actually watered it down a little too much. What? Yeah. Well, not the, the black necessarily, but I think the, uh, the coal black. The coal black because yeah. it needed to cover more? Yeah. Okay. Because nice. it, it looks pretty like bright and gray if you look at like the yeah. legs on, on the camera on my side. Uh, right? I see. Okay. Now, that might just be the exposure between our two cameras, because it looks like yours is a little bit more exposed than mine, but. Let me guess, let me, I don't know for sure. let me put another coat on there and see, <coughs> see where we get. Going back to your red stripes conversation, mm -hmm. racked and confused in the chat says that Soviet era tiger stripes, like the ones on their helicopters, uh -huh. would look really cool. I don't know what that looks like. Well, one of the images you had that you were flipping through before the stream was tiger stripes on some sort of jet. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, okay. I so know I'm not talking. sure. Yes. I'm not sure about the yes. hind Soviet tiger stripes. I can't picture them in my head. Gotcha. But I, I think I, I know, know exactly what, what, what they're talking about. Yeah. And Stryker, that could be, yeah, that could be really cool. Striker 911 is asking about P3 painters. Hashtag. Oh, we, P3 will, painters we have, we got P3 painters for you. Yeah. We got we'll, a special we'll P3 get, painters today. We'll get to that. We'll get to it in a little bit. Maybe we can have, uh, before we do that, Oz, you want to tell us, like, what, how, how much have you played with Nova? I haven't played with Nova very much, but I played against Nova numerous times. Nova, um, so all Guard is kind of mobile. They all have, like, jetpack type sure, stuff. And yeah. they can all, Sky Sentinel flies, and Defender X has high mobility. Nova takes mobility to the highest extreme that Guard has seen in a monster yet. So she's the most mobile Guard monster? So she's monster? the most mobile Guard monster. Ooh, okay. She also has flight, so she's going to always be flying so she can hover on top of fire. And she's uh, speed 6 in alpha and then speed 7 in hyper because she has action sprint in alpha. So she gets even faster. Yeah, so action sprint is move three extra spaces. So it's like a step, basically. But instead of only moving you one space, it moves you three. So she can move nine spaces in her activation in her alpha form. Holy cow. So she's pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, so this is coming along pretty good, I think. All right, I think I got a little thicker. A little thicker coverage on there. Although with that first coat, I don't know if I made it too thick. I can kind of see through it a little bit. But it's definitely darker. I can also pass this along over to you, Tony, if you want to take a look at this at any point. Benefit so of us being in the same room. So there's where I'm at now. And you've already darkened down some. Yeah. And you can really see this, this contrast yeah. from the, the leg, right? Yeah. All right, let's try this. Now we're going to go into the dark. We have a paint question in the chat. It's yeah. not related to this model, but it's yes, still interesting. This is a good time. Um, Justin Juan asks, how you achieve the blending on the wings of the Midnight Archon? Is it just two brush blending, or do you use other products like inks and stuff? So uh, I airbrushed progressively the colors on the wing so that I got like a, a good base coat of the transition from like white to orange. Um, and then I went in afterwards and I glazed with inks to like resaturate some of that color a little bit more. Because when you airbrush, it like tends to desaturate your colors. Um, so I went back in with, with glazes afterwards to, uh, to strengthen up those transitions a little bit more. That was basically it. Did you use our new blazing ink, that orange color? It did. Color? Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was like a, I used yellow and blazing ink more, more than anything else, really. 
base code some of these other areas while we're waiting for Tony. I to made I'm up. making boo boos <laughs> in here and being very. I don't know. I like. I gotta say, I, I've been behind the uh, the camera for a very long time doing these shows with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen a lot, and I've sat here and um, and made you go through this week after week. And <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Uh, it's very hard. The the trick is you just do it. Well, yeah, you that's, just go that's in, the trick. You just do it. Go into it. So I'm just gonna take some. Straight Thornwood green. Water it down a little bit. And I'm going to put some deep shades in to this armor. And this I'm going to two brush blend. Okay. So we're two brush blending, but it's just straight Thornwood. Yeah. And well, I mean, water down a little bit. But. Okay. So Striker911 is asking me what the biggest challenge in balancing Nova was. And it was the speed. Because we wanted, she's so light compared to the other guard robots. They're big, beefy robots that we wanted to accentuate her being faster than the other ones. But everyone knows that a model that can get across the table can really be a bully early game and mess with your opponent's power structure and unit placement and that kind of stuff. So figuring out how to make her fast but not make her just run the table was, was the big challenge. And part of that, what we did, was she has the weakest blast attack of any monster in the entire game. She only has two blue dice on her blast attack, but she has multi-fire on that blast attack, so she can make three shots with it. So she cannot really threaten monsters with her blast attack unless she throws a lot of power dice into it. But she is more of an anti-unit mo model in that. Because... Two blue dice on a blast attack is a lot is what a lot of units have. Right. So a couple of whites and a couple of blues and maybe a red, she can still shoot down lots of def two units. But she's not going to threaten monsters or, or higher def units like G tanks and stuff with that multi fire with only two blues unless she throws a bunch of extra dice into it. Hope you guys can see all of this. I'm trying to Keep everything in frame as much as I can. Let me see. I want to see where you are, you are yeah. doing your, your shades. Yeah. So where so like point, up, point to where you... Up underneath here. Okay. Right? I did it. Just on the extreme there, low sides? And then like on, the, her, on her toes. The biggest shadow areas? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do some underneath this, uh, this wing here. i got to remember. Sit up. Sit up. Underneath her arm, right underneath here. No, it's not quite, it doesn't seem like it's quite as dark as the coal black. So right. why are we doing this in the darkest areas? Uh, because it is darker than the previous colors that we've been using. It is. Okay. Yeah. It, all right. It, it looks more like a natural shadow because, I mean, the, the, even though it's in a less exposed area, the color that it's, or it is originally is still lighter than black. So it will still be brighter than the black. Okay. And also remember, we still haven't highlighted the black yet. Right. Which I might do right now. I am confused. So are we highlighting, so this Thornwood green, is that a shade that's supposed to be the darkest shade for the yellow? Yeah. That's where I'm going wrong. Oh, are you shading the, the I thought we were oh, still working on the black. No, uh -huh. no, 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 no. Okay. These are the things that we learn. I was wondering why. And I'm just playing around with some ideas for the, sh the highlights for the, um, the black right now, so bear with me. I gotta be honest, it didn't even look that bad. <clears throat> it just looks brighter. I was like, oh, it's just kind of this warm shadow. Yeah, so one of the things I'm kind of thinking about when I want to highlight this black is, um, first off, I want it to be kind of a subtle highlight. I don't want it to be super strong. Like, it will eventually be 
pretty bright, but the transitions are gonna be smaller because you want the black to be re really prominent. Uh, and I'm gonna use this like kneecap as, a, as an example, right? Um, so I'm gonna put like some brighter colors with a great coat gray mixed with a little bit of coal black in here. And then I'm gonna blend it back up a little bit down. There's a couple of interesting questions in the chat. One of them um, has been asked a few times. Do you guys know how many parts that model is? This model? Yeah. Uh, I can tell you in a second once I remember. Uh, I, yeah, I, have, I haven't seen I, one unassembled, so I'm one, not sure. One, two, three, four. So her arms, uh, her arms are one piece? Two, three, four, yeah. five. Her arms, five, so all of her six. arms are one. The wing is in three separate pieces. It's center bit, left, right. Um, and then her whole torso is one piece. Uh, I think her head is separate. Her head is separate. Okay, but her body her is arms one, are one solid piece. piece. Her body's one solid piece. And then the backpack is, is in three pieces. Is, is, I think it's in five, because I think these wings, this wing, this wing, and these mm, two. No, they're, they're no? three. Are they they've they've been usually putting the wings on those jet engines. So yeah, so anywhere from five pieces to a thousand is what is what the answer it's, is. It's three, four, five, six, it's six pieces. Okay. The other question is, if this double painter system becomes popular, are we going to have other guest painters Absolutely. on the show? Yep. Absolutely. Now, the specific question is putting me or Hungerford into the painting seat, and you don't want me in the painting seat. <laughs> I, I paint, but I don't paint to any kind of level that people would want to watch. But it's, I mean, the whole idea is to, to get people to, to get better, right? Like, right. Yeah, but if, I we're, don't, if we're talking about painting levels right now... But then, I don't want to get better. Then I need to get okay. off All right, I, the awesome. show. I, my, my philosophy on painting is... I will, I will never paint all my models. No one ever will. Unless you only buy models you know, as art products and you paint quickly. But most of us who have been playing miniatures games for any amount of time end up with so many models that are just in boxes and waiting to be projects that you're never going to get done with anything in a foreseeable lifetime. So my, my goal is to be done beyond all things and I have I have found the level of paint that I can accomplish quickly that makes me satisfied and I can be done. So I might accidentally get better at some point in my life, <laughs> but it won't be on purpose because my, my my main goal is to have models that are painted to a certain standard. That standard not very high, just good <laughs> enough. And like right now, I have, I have 10 painted Riot Quest models. I still have to do Widget. And I'm going to try and get the, the new three and get them done in a couple weeks. The other thing about what you were talking about making boo-boos earlier, that's the other thing I learned um, from my own personal painting levels, is that um, often I don't fix mistakes unless they are horribly egregious. Like if you can see them from arm's length, then I'll fix them. But if you have to get closer, then I don't always fix them. I would say that's probably a general rule that I follow too. Uh, maybe a little tighter than that. But. Like I love amazingly painted models. I just I don't think I'll ever get there. And um, to me, the, the the expenditure of time to get better versus time to get models done mm -hmm. is just the trade off. Is I want to have models that are done because I like playing games with fully painted forces because it makes it look cooler. Yeah. Well, certainly, like uh, to your point of. Um, getting better by accident. Uh, I think that as, if you're a new painter and you're, and you're just kind of painting and learning a couple new techniques and, and starting out as you get more comfortable with it, you'll get better. But yeah. I do think that once you get to a point where you're just kind of painting with the techniques that you, you have and you know and are typically comfortable with, um, that's where you'll just kind of stay unless you're making an effort yeah, to, yeah, you, to push past it and, and learn and try new things. Um, yeah, and different people will settle at a different quality level. Yes. But like, I'm not painting much better than I was in the late 90s. Right. But products like washes and stuff have improved so much <laughs> that I can, I can accomplish better things by not having the skill necessarily to do it, just by having the products do it. Right. Like... Um, the fact that we have a couple of more skin washes 
the Caspian and the Cossite right. that we came out with like a year ago or whatever. They're great. That improved my painting quality in, by leaps and bounds yeah. because I had a brown wash and a yellowy wash that I could just like make clothes look kind of dirty with. My Agata doesn't match the rest of my Pharaoh army because I painted her with Cossite wash and the rest of them I didn't. I also need to apologize to uh, to everybody. Um, I had a little bit of a cold last week, so I'm still a little sniffly this week. But I'm here, and that's the important thing. All right, Jordan, mm -hmm. I'm I'm finally ready to try and catch up to you and move on to doing some of the the coal black. But here's where right. I got here's where I got so far. It's a thing. All I right. I think I think overall, like I I think that I would be. I think I would like to push it, the contrast, even more in it, a lot of yep. spots and, like, even it out. I'm just kind of rushing through this here. So, so something that we can, we can do to, like, just push the contrast really hard, like, we can start by highlighting the yellow, which we can do with, uh, I mean, we can just go easy and just mix Menoth White Highlight into the Moldy Ochre. Into the Yeah. And this will be pretty pretty bright. Then we're getting more questions about the hashtag P3 Painters. Um, you have not missed it. We have not done it yet. Nope. Yep. We're saving it for for a little bit. Although we got a little. It's ten thirty nine though. A little so different. Uh, keep in mind that P3 Painters this week. Let's get these highlights started, and then we can we'll take a look at some other people's paint jobs. So is this how how thin are we doing this one now, Jordan? Um, pretty thin. I mean, I'm two brush blending this, so whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. Um, but we're not looking for the super thin zenithal coverage. We're looking for something a little thicker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You want to keep that opacity. Yeah. So you can see on these kneecaps. Where I push the highlights on that yellow, really starts to pop. I think uh, I think I want to put a little more mouth white in there. I think that's enough. I'm just going to spend all my time mixing paints and not actually doing any painting. Just change this camera to my palette. Get my hair out of there. So again, another reminder, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, you can get a cool PP Scully avatar badge to go with you when you're in chat. You also get access to some really fun emotes. Uh, and if we get to 65 subscribers, and we are very close, then we will unlock another emote to be able to add to that collection. And I believe Oz is going to put in the... Yeah, so we're running a poll. poll. We have numerous options, and I'm putting that link in the chat again on both Facebook and Twitch. Oh, yeah. So you can get some... We could add some chibis. We can add some War Machine logos like the Steamroller logo. We could add the Monpoc... Donut Factory, or we could add a couple of Riot Quest things, the Riot Quest Loot Coin or the Death Trap. And that is up to you guys. So that's looking way better now. I'm glad I added in that, that extra Manoth White highlight. It's much more poppy. Mm -hmm. <coughs> So one of the other things that we can do as well, this kind of just depends on what you want the yellow to look like. You wanted a like a really desert yellow. Yeah. Um, but you can always change that up a little bit. Like if you want to do a more like a much warmer yellow with a little bit of like orange in it, you just take something, uh, take some of this uh, moldy ochre and mix in some scorn red. Just a little bit. Create a kind of a warmer. Ba 
base coat to work with. It's kind of where I wish I had a little bit of actual orange over here, which is working with the same colors that we had last week. If you want to switch to the palette cam so people can see what I'm doing here. <clears throat> so this is it's kind of like a skin tone-ish color right now, but this is just the Scorn Red plus Baldy Ochre. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to add a little bit of brown to this to try and change it up. So I don't know how well you guys can tell how different this is. But if we go back, so yeah, on the, the leg right there, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. That's a much more colorful. So you would use this for your base coat instead? No. So this is something that I would generally, like, if I look at the model, and I'm like I have been for the last five minutes, I'm like, this is a little boring. It's just like, this is very just like yellow, dark yellow, mm -hmm. and black. Well, like, it needs a little bit of color. So I'll, I'll usually like mix in some sort of like other color to add some more visual interest to the model. And so you're just kind of adding it in in random blotches, or are you using, are you kind of going? I'm taking this dark as like areas? a first shade sort of deal. Oh, okay. So I'm kind of mixing it into that area where okay. that first shade would be, and then I'll probably put a, a different deep shade in afterwards. This isn't quite the color that I would use. This is a little odd, but um, let me go grab, or if Oz can go grab. Um, uh, over there? Yeah. Um, this chair doesn't have wheels. What is it? Um, if you want to grab two pots of, uh, where is it, Idurian flesh, it's probably pretty good. We don't have Blood Tracker Brown. Blood Tracker Brown is the, the color that I would really recommend doing. Ember Orange is probably fine, too. That I'm going to do that in some em Ember Orange. Cool. You want to hand two of these over yeah. to Tony? Here you go, Tony. Thank you. Cool. And we don't have... <clears throat> uh, I mean, we do somewhere around here, well, but not on, not on the rack, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to do this with a little bit of Ember Orange instead. Yeah. So you, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. New paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a much more sandy color. I'll water this down a bit. So you're mixing, mixing the ember orange with the moldy ochre, right? Yep. Okay. So let me get in here. I'll do it on this side. That's actually a little too yellow. Looking for like kind of a peachy. Yeah. Or maybe. I mean, I really want blood sugar brown. <laughs> so let me try mixing it really quick. Uh, let's do <coughs> ember orange plus a little bit of battlefield brown. It's not too bad. Yeah, that's better. I've got a couple of development questions. If that's you're, what we're looking for. If you're, yeah, if you're so okay. Just really quick, like this is the, the color that I was looking for right here. Is that like subtle shift? It's not quite as weird as this is. Okay. Like that looks a lot more natural. Okay. So earlier so, somebody asked why Nova is the third guard monster. Uh-huh. Um and it's an interesting question because we are, we are still basically exploring space that was in the original version of Monster Apocalypse 10 years ago. We're, we're bringing back classic things that people loved from the original game and not really exploring brand new territory with, with a lot of these factions yet. Right. We are doing some brand new stuff like the exosuits and the exterminatrix and some of those, some of those units are brand new. 
But monster-wise, we wanted to hit on all the iconic monsters. And the second part of that question is, the other monsters that existed in the original game, there were, there were generally five for each faction. One of those was a body swap monster. So it was a monster that shared a large amount of sculpt with another monster. Like Rekadon and Armadax are the same body with a different tail tip and a different head. And um, Laser Knight was one of the other two, Defender X or Sky Sentinel, I can't remember, just no backpack and like an energy sword and a shield. And canonically, we killed Laser Knight. He goes up against Gorgadra when the apocalypse starts, and he gets beat to death. And that doesn't mean he won't ever come back, but it means that, that right now he's dead. So we didn't want to do Laser Knight or Rekadon or Zorog or some of those monsters because we want to redo them visually. And the fifth monster for everybody was a morpher. So the morphers need more redesign because some of them incorporate literally parts of smaller things. And the guard morpher was Legionnaire. And he's literally built out of a jet and a tank and stuff. He's, he's, he's a combiner right. in the truest sense of the word. So Legionnaire might come back, but he won't come back exactly visually as he looks. And when we were first bringing back Monster Apocalypse over a year ago, we basically started sculpting three monsters for every faction and went with the three unique sculpts from the original game. So Nova's been sculpted for probably over a year. Yeah, she's, she's been sitting around the office for a while. Yeah. But that's why you're seeing things like Teradax and Olgoth. There's, they're the unique sculpts from the original game that were the third monster. Right. So... I hope you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about here with, with changing this up so it looks a lot more interesting. Like, Oh, yeah. I see what you're doing there. So I got, I got a little going on on my leg. Mm -hmm. But I need to be able to add it to so, my So here's more a couple spots. of things that I'm seeing, right? Like if you go to the, this side, Tony. So this is kind of mirroring the same side. Yeah. So I have a lot stronger contrast on this upper leg, right? Yes. So this is a lot more moldy ochre right. up here. And this is pretty close to straight Thamar black right above it. Um, so that is one of the things that really helps kind of like make it all work really well is having like clean, clean separations between colors so that you get more contrast, right? right? Um, <clears throat> so I'd try and when you're, when you're looking at like cleaning up different elements, that's some of the things that you want to do is like go really dark and then go really light. Really light it. right next yeah. to it, yeah. Um, and it helps kind of define all the shapes of the model. Because like these legs are really well defined and I haven't really done too much to them. Right. Um, whereas yours, while they're defined, are not as clean and crisp. They're, no, as not, as not at all. <clears throat> No, they and need, that's, I need to go back over. That doesn't necessarily have anything to do with how clean your blends are or anything. That just is your your choice of color, your application of where that color goes, and how that affects your eye. Right. right. So um, I'd work on doing that on yours, um, specifically. Like, just try it on that leg. Right. Mm -hmm. Just push the highlights on the leg back to the the base coat. So mold the ochre and just try and build that up a little bit more, and then try and go a lot darker right above it on that, like, uh, vent, that kneecap vent thing or whatever it is. And, Tony, we're also getting people commenting that you're hiding half of Nova behind your, behind your, um, your inset camera every once in a while because your angle is slightly different from Jordan's. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, you tilt her up, okay. and then she goes under there. So I'll try and get a so, um, visual mark. Forum Goon asks an interesting question about your wet palette, Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, I believe I'm interpreting the question correctly of, is yellow as the basis for the wet palette a problem when you're mixing colors? No. Not really. Because a lot of wet palettes I've seen use was off-white parchment. Yeah. Like a, a, a very neutral color that, <clears throat> that you might not, that might not skew what the colors you're mixing look like. Yeah, so... It doesn't really affect anything for me. Like, I know what the colors are supposed to look like. Um, and usually I'll just try them out on the model, and if it doesn't work the way I want it to, I will adjust in such a way to get it this, the right color. It's kind of like the same thing 
when I was blending on the web palette before, like if Tony wants to switch it back over here real quick. Um, like I have three different blends for this orange color that I was trying to, to get, right? And if you look at this, you look at this, and you look at this, these are like two very different colors and they all kind of look gray. Like this looks like a skin tonish weird gray. This just looks like gray and this looks like a weird orange. And people need to understand also that the light yeah, that is we can see affecting what this looks like. But also there's a lot more light on this palette than that camera's picking up. Yeah, they, correct. It's yeah, not as dark where what we can actually see right, compared exactly. to what you guys can see. But like if you look at that third color that just looked gray and then you look at the the no, like the legs on these this Nova, like this is really like a warm orange. Um, instead of that gray. So it's, it's a little bit of like how the light uh, is affecting your perception of what it looks like on the wet palette via the camera. Because um, it doesn't really impact as much as you would think when, on, on the palette itself. Dorian Clampett says, Tony, I sent you some fan art. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but Dorian Clampett sent you some fan art. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. If it, was, if it was today, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. And I also have a question. Um, Tecactus, I believe is how that person wants to pronounce their name, is asking if Nova has any new and unique rules because so far, Sprint, Action, and Multifire are existing rules. Okay. Before the end of the stream, I am going to mention um, one of her hyper abilities that is brand new. It might be the only completely brand new ability on her. Every new model is a new combination of abilities. So it does does something new, even though it might not be literally creating something new in the game. But she does have one new ability on her hi hyper. Oz, don't shake the table. That I'm going to talk about. Okay, I was I was moving one of my arms, but also my elbow was touching the table. I'm sorry. It's okay. It was like just subtle enough. Just enough, it, yeah. yeah. Just trying to do a really like fine panel line. All right, that's getting a little, a little better. Yeah, see, Still that already one, looks way better. One more level of highlight on the, that wasn't even highlight, I was just trying to get the, get the moldy ochre back. And if we had a little more time and I was doing this at home, I would probably spend a little more time trying to. Yeah, but you see what I'm talking about. Even that out, right? yeah. In fact, I can throw on a quick, quick highlight here at the top. Like right in there, and I was not ready to two brush blend. Up. Yeah. So that's looking pretty good now. And I guess at this point, I'm kind of just like focusing on the legs, yeah, so that I, we can make that look nice and finished, or at least part of the way there. Let's get in there. All right. Well, why don't we take since we're getting we're getting up on eleven o'clock. We have not done P three painters yet. Yeah, we should do. P3 so let's painters. take a look at P three painters. So, for those of you who don't know about three P three painters, use the hashtag P three painters when you uh, on Instagram uh, is the one that we we kind of see the most. Uh, but also Facebook and Twitter, we will see those. But if you use that hashtag P three painters, we will take a look at your paint jobs, and uh, maybe we will feature them on stream. We just kind of pick ones that we, we think are cool, stand out, um, are very interesting, and try to show them off. But this week, because of WTC, and Oz, you might tell us a little bit about what's going on with WTC. Yeah, that just, that just wrapped up last weekend. And if you're not sure what it stands for, if you're a new person to Private to Press in general, it's the World Team Championship that happens in Europe. It's a big, um, it big moves War around. Machine Hordes tournament. Yeah. And it's five-person teams that play against each other in an interesting subsystem that's not normal for regular tournaments. And 
there's a lot of draw from all over the place. Three American teams went, so 15 Americans were there, some Canadians, but also the winners were from Norway, and the second team, second place was a, a Poland, Poland yeah. team. So th- there's a lot of international play because everybody can get to places that are right. pretty easy. And right. I think next year they're doing it in Poland, maybe. Okay. It rotates didn't, between a couple of different Polish countries. Did the Polish team win last year, too? I can't remember who won last year. I seem to recall that being the case. I don't, don't take my word for it. But yeah, we have some images that we were sent by some people from the WCC of a couple of models. You guys saw the Freedom Bird on the stream we'll, yesterday. We'll show off the Freedom which Bird. Which we're going to show yeah. again because yeah. it's amazing. Uh, and all these photos were uh, photo credit to Zosha Simpson. So thank you for letting us use these photos. Here is the first one of one of the armies that was at WTC this year. Oh, yeah. I think I've seen this before in person. This person's been to other events before. But it looks really nice. This is a really clean orange. You got this. And you say these look like converted clockatrices down at the bottom? Yeah. That is what those are. Those are very clean. I like all this green glow on everything. Well, it's very yeah, this is like, like a super heavily converted old witch. Yeah. There's a lot of like sculpted stuff on here. The base is pretty out there. So there's some watch gears or some other gears that added to the top end there. I like these conversions on the clock traces. They're pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, I can't quite tell what's going on with them. Yeah, I can't. The quite tail. Either. That's the that's the real tail from the clock That yeah. is not anything. It's also the real tail for the the wings. But they flipped they flipped the tail or upside it's down. Real wings. Yeah. They flipped the tail upside down. That's the real chest area because I can see the clock in there. Yeah. Um, but that like back section is maybe different. It looks like they kind of built the, the thing upside down, to a certain extent. Oh yeah, that very well could be. Yeah, and that's that's the thing I love messing around with when I, when I build models. Mm-hmm. Like I did that on the old Scorn um, Cyclops kit because there were a couple of different poses. Mm-hmm. But I figured out if you flipped his arms opposite, mm-hmm. so the arms didn't really have a shape that said this is the right arm, this is the left arm. Correct. If you flipped his arms opposite, he could hold his sword above his head, but it wasn't really designed to do that. So you had to do a little bit of put- putty work in the cracks, but. Yeah. Often, if you look at a model from a different angle and just try putting the bits together, it'll look cool in other ways, like you know, flipping your clockatrice upside down. Mm-hmm. And then here, this one, this is I think this is my favorite from the series. Um, it's a little hard to see in the photo because they're both uh, approximately the same color, but there's a conquest here. And it's ripping the it's guns off of the back of ripping the, a yeah. mammoth apart. <laughs> Which I yeah, I wish I was able to see this one in, in that thing's person. That thing has gotta be huge. Like physically yeah. has yeah. to be huge. Because it's standing on a pretty big rock. Well and to it begin looks with. and it looks like in the photo too, there's these there's these two building spires on the back that it Oh, that's it's, not that's not part of that model. Okay. I hope yeah. not. It'd be no, even that's, bigger that way. That's part of the old witch. All right. Behind it, which we will see in another photo here in a second. Gotcha. Okay, because it might be it might be kind of close, but yeah, this is this is amazing. This is very dynamic. I love this. All the ropes and everything modeled to actually look like they're Ooh, well done. flying in the wind. This is well done. And here that we go. Oh yeah, there it is. Now I can yeah. see the old witch there in the in the very back. But again, it, it, it's a little hard to see in some of these photos. But the 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 amount of stuff going on on these. Models is crazy insane. There's a that jack troll here. That getting its head exploded by I know. Axe is kind of amazing. Yes, there's That's a troll getting awesome. its head exploded here. There's some missiles firing off the shoulder. There's this griffin is being attacked by, by this war jack. I mean, this is this is really awesome stuff. And of course, the one we showed off yesterday, Freedom Bird. Freedom Bird. With a tricorn hat. That's. Positioned kind of weird. There's also a Liberty Bell under there. Yeah, it's on the, you can see the, the big crack oh, there under the tail, under the really tail cool. sitting on yeah. a Liberty Bell. That's really cool. Those are really awesome. So great Props job. Props to all the people at WC, yeah. WTC who bring real cool stuff. Real cool painted bottles. Yeah, and just hashtag P3 Painters hashtag when you post P3 things. Painters. And then they'll come up on this show um, if we think they're awesome in some way. Oh. <sighs> Excuse me. Ooh. It's been no a long, yawning, Jordan. It's been a We've long, only been on, only been on for an long, hour. Tough couple of weeks. 
I'm very tired. Yeah, yesterday we had a whole bunch of fun packing out the um, the backer stuff for Mega Protocol. Mega Protocol, oh, yeah, we had a we, had we a were Mega out Protocol there packing slinging party. boxes around and taping stuff and labeling stuff and things were going in the mail. Yep. Some people might have already got shipping notifications and things like that. There was a it was a flurry of activity. All right, well now I'm bummed that our hour's almost up because I want to get. Tony wants to paint. I want to paint. I love Tony, paint. Tony, th this show is just an excuse for you to paint, isn't it? That's I get to the format. I get to flex is. my. <laughs> the format I get to change. flex my yeah. authority to put myself on camera, uh, just so that I can sit here and paint. All right. Well, I mean, I'm I'm kind of at a at a decent stopping point here. This is pretty good. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do my Nova spoiler. Do the Nova spoiler. So, you promised. Um, yeah, I did. So um, I'm not going to give everything away about Nova this week, but next week on the Dev Hangout, we probably will talk about her and even show her card if we have it. But in hyper form, she has an action called fission. Fission? Fission. 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 Um, it's like fusion, but it's not fusion. It's fission. <laughs> I think it's how um, like nuclear power plants work. Like, I think it's nuclear fission. Okay. So this action says, during your monster activation, this model can spin an action die to perform a fission action. And lets you push two action dice from your unit pool to your monster pool. So uh -huh. it means that if you start a turn with 10 action dice uh -huh. in your monster pool and you spend a couple, she can bring effectively one of them back. Because she spins one die and she pushes two dice. So she gets the die she spent back and another one. So is that, is that a good way? So that effectively gives you, you can it spend all your you, dice and you it, could get a second it kinda gives monster you, Action well, it kind of gives turn? you 11 dice on your monster turn. Okay. It also gives you some flexibility when you're messing around with, with that, like leaving a couple of dice on your monster pool mm -hmm. just in case. If you only leave one, it doesn't do much good for you. Sure. But if you leave a couple and you decide to take a monster turn when you were maybe planning to do a unit turn, it gives her a little bit more power in that monster turn because she has one more just action one more die. Action. Yeah. So it's basically a bonus action die. But it is an action you have to do, so she can't do it more than once. And if there was another model with fission, she could, that, that model couldn't do it, unless you had a Statue of Liberty and that kind of stuff. Okay. So basically, it's a bonus action die to, to give her a little bit more flexibility and or her team more flexibility. So yeah, so not only is she faster, but just kind of yeah. able to do just a little bit yeah. more. And, and that's another one of those themes of that she's about speed and mobility and stuff like that, right. is that she's got a little bit more flexibility when it comes to action dice spending because she can get one back. Okay. Jordan, you want to wrap us up here? Yeah, I can do that. Well, thank you everybody for joining us here today on Get Your Paint On with our new and improved setup, if I do say so myself. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next week. I'm not sure exactly what we're doing. We need to figure that out. But um, we'll be ready for you next week with some new stuff. Thanks so much for joining us, you guys. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. Bye. Bye. I didn't get to wave in your camera. I'm so sad. Tony flipped it. I was going to.